The round table. Gentlemen. Aye. Let's broaden our minds. Lay on, gentlemen, and let them know what's what. Fire at will. Yeah. It's time for action, gentlemen. Gentlemen of the round table. What's the topic of discussion? Civility, gentlemen. Always civility. Are you good over here? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. 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 I like that. All right. Dear God, I would like to thank you for making this a lizard-free podcast. <laughs> no lizards here, God! And then, by lizards, I mean thank you for sparing us an evening from Holden McNeely and his <laughs> and his scaly skin and his bumpy body and his shitty, <laughs> shitty demeanor. His and how, tiny eyes like two pieces of onyx. <laughs> <laughs> and he don't forget the, the zits on his neck. The yeah. zits on every part of him. Oh my God. Don't go to the beach with Holden. Don't go anywhere with Holden. Don't don't touch him. The poor girl he is on a date with tonight. If that's oh, oh my he's god. He's the only uh, man who can come on a chick but never have semen released from his dick. Oh, I'm yeah. telling you, the zits alone. <laughs> <laughs> Just pus. He comes pus. He comes oh, pus man. on the but better birth control. Oh yeah. We're gonna call it cuss. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for Holden's cuss and everything, keeping him away from us for just one evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Ah! Welcome to the Drunk Table of Gentlemen. Holy Lord, it's nearly midnight. It's Saturday, Labor Day weekend, and we have a gaggle of geese in here that would make even the most uh, of hunters proud. We've got Victor <laughs> Baranato. Hello, Victor. Thanks for being here. Hey, what's up? You're How's very it going? good, Victor. <laughs> and we've got Mark Normand. Hey, how are you? They are fine. <laughs> and and uh, we've got Cena Gaznavi. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know Cena Gaznavi, he changed his name to Cena John because apparently one point uh, in his career, somebody brought him up as Cena... What was it? Gaza, Gaza, who gives a fuck? Gaza, Gaza, who gives a fuck? <laughs> and I want to personally apologize for missing, mispronouncing his name. It's Gaza, Gaza, Gaznavi, which is fantastic. So thank you for being here, Cena. Thank you for having me. All right, now where am I at? I am at the round table of gentlemen. Who are these people? Jack Zabrowski, I'm not drunk. Yeah. Yes, you are. Yep. Ed Larson. Pat Dixon. Pat Dixon sitting in for Holden McNeely. That's all you have? <laughs> no Pat, Pat, can you say something about your mother really quick just to keep our audience, you know, I'll calm. do nothing of the kind. Move along. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Who else is here? I'm Kevin Barnett, man. Sober as a cat, like I do. I'm Ben Gizzle. Henry Zabrowski, you're also here. I'm up to my eyeballs and fucking fart in this corner. I don't know who farted really hard. My fault. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. I was with Norman last night, and he was tooting up a real goose egg, and it was nasty. I said, put some Tabasco on it, because oh, it is a really disgusting piece of shit. I'm Ben Kissel, and with us is always the newsman, Marcus Parks, wearing those gay ass. Mark, uh, Mark, uh, why the uh, fuck you not Mark right now? Right on me. It's not <laughs> good. It's <laughs> on me. literally it's so hot in here. If we can pull this episode off, it'll be a goddamn miracle. <laughs> there are so many men in this room. It's just radiating heat. It is yeah. the hottest already round table we've ever done. It's because you keep <laughs> sniffing all our scrotums. You know, you guys should touch uh, it. it is the scrotum. Yeah, she's, she's, all right, Marcus Parks, what's the news, buddy? A six. 16-year-old boy and a friend were throwing rocks at passing cars like when you a, do like you course. do when a passenger in an SUV fired a crossbow bolt at them yes. hitting the teen in the abdomen I Did like he die? Nah, he was taken to the nearby hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Good, learn the lesson. Hey, Don't fucking lesson, throw man. rocks at cars, you little piece of shit. You can fucking get stabbed with an arrow. I agree. This is this circumvents the entire legal system. Someone throws a rock at your car, you shoot him with a crossbow. This is how life should be. That guy yeah. was so excited when that rock hit his car. Yeah, He's like, yeah, oh, yeah. that's why I bought this. It's always <laughs> been sitting in the car. This 
that's the moment. <laughs> that's the thing. I, I just, I'm just so happy this guy was like, get into his car. He forgot his keys. He was like, I got the keys. And he got into his car, started up. He's like, ah, the crossbow. What an <laughs> asshole I turned out to be. Ran inside. You never know when you're going to need one. It's like a seatbelt. Yeah, man. That's I, why you don't throw rocks at cars. You yeah, never I know who's going to. Uh, for the people in the Middle Ages because they used to depend on the crossbow for self defense, but it can't even injure really a little boy. <laughs> that's true. But they used to, that would be like, this is my, I've got a crossbow, my family is safe, but if a little boy attacked, they'd still die. I mean, minus the bridge, this is a middle-aged situation. Someone throws a rock at somebody else, they take out the crossbow. This is exactly how war used to be. Yeah. yeah. I love it. It's a good look into the pastoids. If he hit him from any longer than just point blank, he's an excellent crossbow marksman. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. I'm holding it. Was it while he was driving? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> immediately pulls it out. Drive crossbow. Yeah, you know, the guy, the guy, like they threw rocks at his car. He stopped, pulled up his crossbow, went, and then shot you- him in the stomach. <laughs> I love it. Did it was you the make driver. That part up, or do you know for a fact that he stopped? I am speculating. Victor, he definitely had to stop because you, no, no. you can't drive Everybody a car. Here is thinking he has to stop, but this is a dude who owns a crossbow. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good point. It's like Jason Voorhees never stopped riding, uh, you know, the, uh, the the motorboat that he was on when he crossbowed somebody. That's Here's what point. it was. It wasn't the driver. It was the passenger. Yeah. Oh. It was he, was, a, he was riding crossbow. Uh. Yeah, yeah. There was a pa- he was in uh, poli- uh, actually the the AP uh, description is much better. Police say a shirtless boy and a friend <laughs> were, th- <laughs> were throwing rocks at a black Toyota RAV4 in the Linda Vista neighborhood Monday afternoon when a passenger fired a crossbow out the window. Man, I hate RAV4s. Of course they were throwing rocks at it. I hate shirtless boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I think that uh, the guy with the crossbow probably also never uses a fork or knife. He you know, only eats Cornish hens. <laughs> I believe that Pepsi exists. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're amazing. He goes to medieval times. He's like, this isn't right. <laughs> it's just not right. <laughs> Finally at home. Yeah. And what's great is that nobody has been arrested. Fantastic. Uh, no one uh, should be arrested. arrest them for it. This is the thing. The crime is solved. This is what it should be. That's justice. Exactly. <laughs> Dixon, what's the... Uh, if you saw a car going down the street, you had a gaggle full of rocks in your pocket. You're a young boy. You're not wearing a shirt. What kind of car are you hitting with a rock? What do you mean? Like, like what kind of car do I hate? Have some sort of resentment I against? used to... Sh- I'm, all I'm saying is I used to shit on this guy's Corvette when I was growing up. Take, take big old dumps. How often? The on the car. On the car. Oh. Like four times, I would say in like three months, when we were about 14, 15. And That's there's nothing amazing. more amazing because you can just fantasize about like waking up in the morning and be like, oh, I got to go to work at Century 21. And then he has to clean my shit off his car, <laughs> which is a fun time. <laughs> it's a fun time for me to think about it. It's reasonable real- for him, but don't buy that shitty ass car. A so- real estate agent with a Corvette? I have no idea what his job was because I was very young, but I will say it was, his son was a douchebag. I wanted to shit in his car because it was red and it was nice, and uh, that's what you dump on. Man, I'll tell you, I had a friend uh, back in high school. He's like, oh, I remember he came up to me. He's like, oh, I just put my I just put my dick in his gas tank. I'm just like what? That's see, fantastic. I was just like, but like, well, what do you? What does that even matter? Like, <laughs> what is that? Even, what is that even, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, we used to piss like, in gas <laughs> tanks. You get my dick germs in your gas. <laughs> This is the irony of putting the old tip up on the mailbox with the red flag. Uh, as soon as we saw that when we were growing up, we always used to just urinate on the fresh mail because you knew it was new in there. That's fun. Did anybody else do that? No. 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 That just I'm telling you, and... it was amazingly fun. You were the only one tall enough to urinate into a mailbox. We did good stuff. <laughs> we did good stuff indeed. So you're fucking peeing in mailboxes and shitting on cars? Are you, are you fucking wilding? What, was ha- what happened? Please. Well, I'll tell you one thing. We didn't have the money for a crossbow. So you can't exactly go out there and exact the revenge that you want to re- uh, fucking exa- enact. You know, you, you gotta go out there and use what you got. <laughs> All your ammunition was internal. I get it. Yeah, we yeah, literally yeah. would not pee for three <laughs> hours. We would sit in the house, drink three tons hours. and tons oh, of brews, so three and hours, not pee and not shit, and just like get ready to go. It was fantastic. Yeah. So this is group shitting on cars. It was fun. I was the one who shat the most, and then we would take all our clothes off and run naked through sprinklers. Uh, <laughs> fucking weird ass, stupid life. Yeah. Same friends. I gotta agree. Absolutely. Wait, 
yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, wait, yeah. I, here's the thing. Didn't you start off your whole thing by saying that, yeah, if you throw rocks at cars, that's what happens. So you never got a crossbow thrown at you, and you shat all over people's cars. The thing is, I didn't throw rocks. I shat, and uh, I felt amazing. Overall, I would say my life has been relatively uh, good, considering all the terrible thing I've done uh, I've done to uh, wealthier people. Yeah, he so really, like, Ben Ben has really never gotten any comeuppance. That's not true, though. Uh, my uh, life alone. No, you got comeuppance, come up yeah. man. <laughs> A lot. He's had a lot of come up in. Yeah. <laughs> this is the guy who's had a trophy shoved in his asshole. This is the same dude. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. Have you seen his stomach? It's terrifying. <laughs> yeah! 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 <laughs> Understand how depressed this dude has been for the past two months. He is the saddest fucking dude in the world. <laughs> it's amazing. I'll tell you, I want to give a public apology, ladies and gentlemen. I love everybody that I know, and I, I've been a bit in the dumps lately, oh, but man. that's only because I love so much. <laughs> and, uh, it's been tough. Yo, you got into a car on the way over here, and he couldn't even fit in the front seat. <laughs> they had to open up the sunroof because he's a monster. <laughs> That scene uh, from Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah. What's the name of that? So upset. It, it wasn't upsetting. It was refreshing. My eyes got a lot of air. And, no, and then fun. you and then you decided to take it out on the driver and ask him about his married sex life. First of all, he is an Arab fella. He needs he relief. Not Arab. He's not Arab. He's he was Spanish. not Arab. Oh, what was I'm he? I'm so he sorry. He's totally a Mexican. Cena John is a total fucking lunatic, and that cab driver was thrilled that I talked to him about his sex life because he's lonely. He wants it. All people want to do. What do he say? What's he? What's what's he and the old lady? Apparently, doing? he's having sex all the time. I mean, I don't even understand. Like people are doing better than me, and uh, <laughs> that will happen. No, I once had a, an extended conversation in Philadelphia with a cab driver who talked about uh, fucking a girl in the ass for a good, I'd say, ten minutes. He was very excited. He was well, very excited. I just had a conversation recently where a cab driver was talking about fucking a girl in the ass, and I I, I, t- I, I recorded it. Yeah? <laughs> because he started in about fucking a girl in the ass. He's like telling me how to fuck women, and he's like, you gotta fuck their ass, and then their pussy. And then <laughs> I was like... And, and then their like, mouth. And then he's like, you gotta eat their ass, and then their pussy. And I was like, in that order? <laughs> I love it. So you Wrong recorded order. it. I think that's a fascinating yes, thing about the it. future. It's like, usually a cabbie gets to say like what they want to say about eating ass and eating pussy, and nowadays everything's Recorded. I mean, do you feel like this is going to come back to haunt this fellow? Are you going to play it online? What's I he going to be? Not the shit online. Ooh, what's he yeah, gonna be? Not think... a cab driver. Yeah, they're not going to take his medallion away. <laughs> I don't know, man. It goes back to the whole Cat Williams thing. That Cat Williams, where he got uh, yelled at for uh, you know screaming at the Mexican. The Mexican fellow's like, "Oh, I wish I was in Mexico." They were in Phoenix, and Cat's like, "Go back to Mexico." Then I used to be a slave. He did this whole fantastic thing about like how blacks have it harder than Mexicans, oh. and then he did a USA 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 chant, which must have been very confusing for any sort of. <laughs> Like white racist, they're like, I, I like what he's saying. I just don't like what he looks like. Um, but it was amazing, and it's like, but now he's in trouble for that because some asshole didn't watch the show. They watched it through their iPhone. Similar with the, uh, you know, Richard, whatever the fucking asshole is, Richard the Third. The yeah, Richard the Third. Because God knows he had an iPhone. Wait, wait, wait. But nonetheless, what I'm you saying mean, is, you mean Richard Greco. Richard Greco, of course, when he yelled at all those blacks for being... Kramer? Uh, Kramer? Yes, Kramer. Yeah. Michael Richards. <laughs> it's like you used to be able to get away with things, and now everything is recorded. I mean, right. Victor... Yeah. You might have fucked this guy totally over when he was trying to be honest with you, yeah, and that's the sad thing. Like, I can't believe there's a racist, sexist cab driver. It's a good point, and people are going to react. But yeah. what if no one gets in his cab anymore? What? That would be sad. No, uh, who? Just, no, you never go from the ass to the pussy. You go the pussy to the ass. Exactly. Oh, that yes. was my main yeah. concern. Yeah. Yeah. You start with Why the mouth, you go, you go to the no, pussy. No, the ass is the last stop. You can't put ass on pussy. No. Disagree. Yeah, the mouth is the last stop. kinds of weird shit happens. Yeah, if you go from ass to pussy... Uh, you run the risk of infection. Now, That's here's infection. a story about uh, it's the pussy, the ass, and then the mouth. So All right, so you swallow it. I believe we have a ass story. I here. met a girl in uh, Huntington, oh. West Virginia. She worked in a bookstore. Of I got course, her, I got West her, Virginia. I got her to come. Uh, uh, got her to come up to the show. Right, she watches the show. We come down. I take her to McDonald's right. after the show. <laughs> there First, yeah, you live, man. Classic, classic. First night I met her, I take her. I take her back to my hotel room. And I fucked her in the ass immediately before we even ate the hamburgers. Wow. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> so what was worse for the woman, the dinner or the ass sex? First, uh, yes, absolutely. First entry, first entry. No other. It wasn't pussy to ass. It was just ass. Wow. Did she? Did she wow. request it? Did, wait, 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 wait. We were just on the same page. <laughs> Good for her. So, so after you fucked her and came in her ass, did she eat the hamburger? She did. Yeah. <laughs> Out of your ass. Yeah. It's just so funny because all the nutritionists are like, "Oh, you were great until you ate the hamburger." Right? You know, the ass sex is totally healthy. <laughs> I've never, I've never really had the good butt sex. Norman, do you ever Me, done yeah, it? Yeah, I'm not a fan of it. Not a fan. What yeah. do you mean you're not a fan? I don't know. I, I feel like once you get through the the first, you know, the first opening, it's just like a parlor in there. It's huge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the thing. Chicks are like, my ass is so tight. My ass is so tight. Yeah. But it's like, it's, it's like one of those. The ring is tight. But once you're in there, it's like a pool. See, it's like, pro- <laughs> that's the thing. it's like, it's like prohibition. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, no one's in this speakeasy. But as soon as you go through the smallest possible Willy Wonka door, you're like, oh, this is a whole saloon. Holy Lord. I had no idea. Everyone's having a great time. I got buddies in here. I mean, that's an anus. <laughs> I love the butt sex. Uh, Mark. Because you know all about the anus. Well, every time, uh, yeah, I've had butt sex many a time with a lady, and every time that I'm glad I glad you threw that uh, with the lady. In yeah, there. I know, I, I, I know. <laughs> I'll tell you, he's also had it yeah. many a times with somebody who's like hot. Anyway, <laughs> I always feel like every time I go for the butt sex, I always feel like I'm gonna rip something. Yeah, man, that's like, what you're man. That, like, that's, 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 that's what you, you always are feel going like. to rip something. Yeah, 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 yeah. You feel like something's just gonna, I don't know, fall apart. And now, gonna, see, yeah. you're you're kind of a swinger. You've been with quite a few broads. What's you're a the, terrible person. It's the round table, so yes, <laughs> you're right. So what's, what's the what's the position that you like the most or dislike the most when it comes to having sex with a random woman that you don't want to have hate you at the end? I, I, nothing's better for me than a girl uh, straddling my face really? and smothering me with her vagina. You like vagina. to feel like a horse. I don't know if that's a horse thing. I don't understand how the horse. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, they put those bags over their heads and they just eat and eat. And oh, eat. Yeah. I see, like the feed the bag. Corners, the feed bag. Yeah, you like to treat a pussy like know, a feed the- bag. <laughs> <laughs> When you eat out a girl, yeah, are you using nose? Oh, absolutely! Look at this—I got a big Persian nose. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. 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 Do some work. Get in the nose. Gotta get in there. You gotta yeah. be hungry. You gotta, all you right. can eat buffet that shit. Yeah, yeah. Wait, why is that what? frowned upon? Uh, I've had girls like, "What the hell are you doing?" I'm like, oh, no, no, they don't "You're a fucking man. Jew. Of course you're gonna use your nose." He's not, 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 not a Jew. Jew. He he's pretends to be a Jew, but he's not a Jew. I mean, I got this flat nose. It's not ideal for such things, but I still use it. You gotta use it. Absolutely. Why wouldn't you? Go to war with the army you got. That's what I said. Yeah. I feel like getting eaten out by a black dude is like the same thing as getting out by a teenage mutant ninja turtle. Like getting eat by, getting eat by it. You know, like getting your fucking box. What? What, 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 are you, what are you saying, man? What are you teenage saying? mutant ninja turtle. What are you flat ass no? Dude, what I'm saying to you. This is the thing. I'm slightly drunk, but what I'm saying to you. Is turtles don't have noses, they don't Ben. Don't have a nose. First of all, don't turtles, turtles have, noses? have noses. Have you not seen the teenage mutant ninja turtles flat ass noses? You imagine them you rubbing all over. You, you, you digging holes. Man. Fucking idiot! You're digging holes right now. You're digging no, holes. I'm not digging any holes. Are you trying to tell me that the TMNT doesn't have a fucking nose? Pull up a pic of a, of a, of Please. A and Lyle. that nose, yeah. like KB's, will never never satisfy oh. a woman. <laughs> right. Because it's weak, it's not appropriate, <laughs> but it, and the thing is, it, they got the glands, it's too Holes, smelly. Man, you were in a fucking hole, you're hanging out with Shia LaBeau in Bro. 2004. What a Disney movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good friends, I don't even get the reference. Yeah. What I'm saying is, <laughs> fucking big old flaring nostrils, they're smelling too much pussy. No nose Nothing's on that sm- turtle. Yeah, there's no oh! nose on that turtle. Yeah. You're <laughs> yeah, the tell Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles, there's no noses on that turtle. That's stupid, dude. There are definitely noses. There are no noses. How Look do they at that Leonardo fight? right now. Uh, we're Leonardo looking at it. doesn't have nostrils. No, no nose. No nose. Mr. Varnado, yeah. you're a fan of TMNT. Do they or do they not have noses? And if they do, how are they at eating pussy? <laughs> they don't have noses, dude. Even in the original creations by Eastman and Laird. Hey! Fantastic revelation! Uh, I'm motherfucker's bringing, wrong. He's bringing the black and white into it. Sounds authoritative. I'm sorry I answered your question. It's fine, Victor. 
It doesn't fucking matter, Victor. All I'm oh, yeah, saying man. is Kevin eats pussy bad, and he fucking sucks at it. Yeah, good conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Do you eat I, pussy bad, Kevin? Kevin? Bad eating yeah, your pussy? I don't understand. Kevin is terrible at eating pussy because he doesn't like ass, and ass is right next to the pussy, and you got to fucking smell that. You don't like ass? No, you don't oh, we've been through this, man. No, I don't, don't remember don't all of our conversations. Wait, you don't have to eat ass. <laughs> Pussy. All right, all right. Ben, we ben, all know Kevin sound, doesn't like pussy. You sound like Victor. you never get laid. <laughs> oh, hello. How are you? Obvious. <laughs> of course I never get laid. Look at me, Victor. When do you think the last time I got laid was? I'm like a fucking tarp in the middle of fucking Arizona. Dude, it's you, not raining. Dude, there are, there are a bunch of tall chicks who will fuck any tall dude. They're Victor, out there. You don't there understand. A bunch of tall Women chicks. do not like me because I'm like smarter than them. He's and I'm got like, a girlfriend. <laughs> I'm fucking off over the map, dude. This is case in point, Ben Kissel here. Lots of girls would sleep with him. He just manages to offend them to the point where they want to hate themselves so much that they'd rather fuck a guy my size, frankly. All right, Cena hasn't done comedy for a while. A 45-year-old India, Indiana grandfather has been charged with child abuse after trying to toughen up his three grandsons with brutal hikes in the Grand Canyon, according to park rangers. He was busted after rangers and tourists observed him abusing the boys ages 12, 9, and 8. The boys told police they had been hit, choked, whipped, forced to run up trails under the blazing sun at temperatures as high as 108 degrees. Say it slower. And denied food. <laughs> so, Kevin, how do you feel about these and, kids reliving your past? And denied food and water during the hikes. Carlson had told them to, quote, look happy. If they passed other people on the trail. Yeah, but there was no sexual abuse, right? No sexual abuse. Then that's not real abuse. Yeah, no, it was fine. What he did to those kids was fine. (laughs) On the day... (laughs) This is why... Marcus, this is why we can't do child abuse stories. Because it's just everyone's just always on the side of the absolute criminal. Because kids are fucking pieces of shit. They're good kids. kids. No, all kids are awful and they deserve everything they fucking get. Victor, Victor, you were a child once. What was was. the worst thing that your mother ever did to you other than giving birth to you? (laughs) Introduce me to white people. No, my. Isn't that like the mirror mother, for you? Uh, Are you mother, kidding me? My Hello. Mother never, my mother never did anything bad to me. My dad, however. Oh, yeah. Genetic. Ah. My dad was the dude who choked me. No. Yeah. Choke you? Oh, yeah. So choked what happened? You? So you had a father. Was your father black and your mother is black? Yeah, everybody's black. And you're albino. <laughs> That's true. So what was it like when you came out of the womb? Was your father just like, who fucked the mailman? Was there ever like a moment where they were just like, well, this obviously can't be mine? Oh, I forgot to tell you, my family's educated. (laughs) (laughs) Different than mine. I like that. I like a good, I like a good edge. All right. Well, let's not go nuts with the round of the. They applause. were running around shitting on cars and pissing in fucking mailboxes. Yes, 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 yes. That's a piece of shit. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, you can always thank me for making this podcast amazing, and you're welcome. So there was something. So when you came out, everything was going fantastic, and uh, you did well. Yeah, everything was fine. <laughs> so the, the fucking the melanin doesn't drop a lot of the time. So like a couple hours or a day. Or so you think he came out black? No, I like I. I don't have these pictures anymore. Like, my house burned down when I was in like fifth grade. So Jesus, but no, yeah. like the melanin doesn't. For some reason, it doesn't uh, uh, kick in. Yeah. For like maybe a couple of days, sometimes a couple of hours. So you're telling me I had the potential to be a black baby? No. And no, 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 no man, you no. fucking you're not strong you're stupid you're right now. You're a Nazi, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're a fucking Nazi, man. Well, it's all over. Fine. You never know who's going to win what wars, and sometimes you got to wage some. So the thing is, Marcus, what's going on in the news? <laughs> <laughs> all right, what's going on in the news? Prostitution is not only legal in Bonn, Germany. The city has... Cool. Speak of the devil. The city has implemented a new sex tax for prostitutes who want to ply their trade. They've installed automated meters in red light districts. Prostitutes who want to work must plug in about nine dollars to get their nightly permit. Those what? caught without one face fines of about one hundred and fifty dollars. Wow, that's not that bad. Though. Nine bucks—that's nothing. To be able to do it for for legal, I mean that way. I mean, like I'm sure the fine is way more than ninety bucks. Not just to the have, fine not is one hundred and fifty dollars. Prostitution, right? Like yeah. like for unlicensed. Right? I mean, how, how much long should do they get paid though? That's the real question. They're prostitutes. It depends on how hot they are and who they're fucking. 
That's how much point. would you pay though in Germany for an hour? What do you think? It, would you bucks? Depends on the broad. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you need a license. Hundred bucks. You're talking like a tourist, dude. <laughs> I mean, right? hundred bucks. Who here has been with a prostitute? I've never been with Dixon. Have you ever been with one? No, but you know what? I have talked. Yeah. We were ta- we were talking to uh, <laughs> Detective Reynolds the other day for the for the New York City Crime Report. That and they, they were they, he was in Vice for a long time, and they would pick up two prostitutes a night each. There were ten of them, and they'd get twenty prostitutes. That was the goal. They put them in a paddy wagon, Convice. and in order to keep it interesting, they would come up with contests. They try to see who could get the prettiest prostitute or the one with the biggest tits, or uh, sometimes the one they would do ass to mouth. The Sometimes best. they would do the one, uh, they would negotiate for the best, uh, cheapest blowjob. Yeah. And the cheapest one they got. I don't know what number's in your head, but it's less. All right. What's a cheap right. blowjob? Seven, 75 cents is what it was. Yes. 75 oh. cents for a blowjob? 75 cents. A guy wow. seriously negotiated a 75 cent blowjob. Yeah, man. Yeah. They had the French wow. in uh, Tallahassee. They used to, we used to call it the uh, French Town Steamer. You could pick up a prostitute and you go to a. Uh, Burger King, you get a value meal and a blowjob for ten dollars. <laughs> ten bucks. I mean, hey, that guy's overpaying. Seventy-five cents. This man needs to be president. Well, she that's was, the fiscal that's responsibility we need. She, she was an eighteen-year-old crackhead, and she was pregnant, so she was sucking cock for two. Yeah. Oh uh, well, that's a good point. You should have paid her Maybe double, a dollar fifty. Come on, at that price, though. That kid's eating a lot of cum. Uh, He's gonna come out with an. He's gonna be strong thing. as an ox. Exactly. He's gonna be, uh, Exactly. It's not drunk. It's going to come out beautiful. It's probably come it's going to come out like a beautiful it's probably come out like uh, you know Kevin Barnett, just a gorgeous uh, black baby but with a with so nice skin. Go up to a whore and just go, "Can you break a dollar?" <laughs> nice, and she just clicks her fucking vagina and a quarter comes out. Yeah, also she's going to be full, she's got tons of change on her. You can hear whores coming a mile away. I mean, that's the golden thing about the prostitute that goes for change. Right, right. She's got a fanny pack or one of those little quarter things like a, like yeah. girls at the casino. Tinka, 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 tinka. <laughs> I still, I, I think if she'll suck it for seventy five, she'll suck it for seventy, though, right? Oh, yeah. uh, so, I mean, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> my, uh, my friend fucked a prostitute. It turned out it was a guy. This is in Mexico. Uh, oh, and then you got to pay him double. Well, hell of a story. Uh, we were at a strip club. She brought him upstairs, and uh, he talked her from seventy five down to fifty. Wait, it was a woman fucking a male prostitute? No, it was my friend. A guy fucked a guy. He didn't oh, know it. Oh gotcha. She was hot, like it was a guy, but it was. She he was didn't know. Very the guy? No, you couldn't tell. It was dark, and he goes up there, talked her down from 75 to 50, and she goes, all right. He does it, comes back down. We're all laughing because the bartender told us it was a guy, so we're all flipping out. And he comes back, and we're like, so what'd you do? And he goes, fucked her in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> And put it in the mouth. Oh, that man is brilliant. I, uh, I remember we uh, murder fist back in Tallahassee. We did this AIDS benefit at a gay club that we performed at all the time, and it was murder fist. What was the name of the gay club? Brothers. Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Here we're all brothers. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, we're we're doing the we're doing the gig, and then we're splitting time with uh, you know the trannies doing lip syncing and whatnot. And the one trainee walks in, and she was hot. Like, he was just fucking big-ass fake titties, just straight-up hot. Eddie. So we're sharing a dressing room with these fucking trannies. Oh, that must have been fun. Well, you know, we just got out real fast. It was a small dressing room, about, you know, a quarter the size of the room we're in right now. And uh, I remember the tranny, I was in the bathroom, and I popped my head out of the bathroom, and I'm walking by, and the hot tranny pops out of the dressing room just like... No top on, just fake titties how hanging were, out. How were they? They're fucking awesome. Yeah, you know, and this is fake titties hanging out, and then he, he's holding the plate of blow, and wow. it's like, and it's I mean, like, that's it. And they're like, they're like, she's like, you want some? And I was like. <laughs> I got enough problems. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't take any blow from no, a tranny. No, no, no. There was an angel. Was blow. <laughs> I mean, that's the oh, thing. Exactly. Were you sleeping? I, Eddie, why didn't you take... Why didn't you no, take No, that's a blow, world man. you don't enter, man. This is God. why... No, what are you... Are you too serious? Victor, yes. what? Come half, on. Yeah, you, a <laughs> tranny <laughs> offers you blow. I mean, you do the blow. A topless I would the hot tranny. tranny. I'm telling you, right now... Don't I would you have... blow with topless hot trannies? No, no. You do blow with topless hot trannies. No, you don't. That only... Goes. It's gonna. It only goes. Bad. Through you come on uh, her fake tits. 
tits, which is uh, fine. God she is a woman. It, and now we've got this... a segment from Pat Dixon. <laughs> oh, perfect follow. Because uh, this is something that I do as like a comedy lecture series. And I'm going to do part of it tonight since you guys asked me to do a segment. This is uh, uh, a segment about the 20 worst most offensive, most brutal rape jokes, and uh, I'm gonna st- I'm gonna go ahead and tell one tonight. I'm gonna tell the twentieth most offensive rape joke. Now you guys know that women love the Irish accent; they really do, don't yeah, they? Yeah. Doesn't that kind of make do. you sick the way they like it? They, they love, love it, and they want to go to their. They all dream of going to Ireland and you know hanging out with rowdy Irish boys in pubs. Fighting I hope they I, exactly. Stuff. I hope you get to do that, ladies, and I hope while you're there, you get gang raped on a pool table. <laughs> Just all of them, just yeah. getting right by the pool Jody cues Foster in the ass, style. breaking yeah. them off. You're fucking getting beat up. They're breaking shit off in you. You climb down. You wander outside. You find a cop. You tell him he calls for backup, and then they all gang rape you, <laughs> and they break your teeth on the Blarney Stone, and they leave you there, and you pass out, and you wake up, and you find you're under this rainbow. It's like a fantasy. And there's a leprechaun. Yeah, I just feel there. like he's telling your and story. And all the leprechauns come in, and they fucking rape you, and, and they, they fill you full me. of their green jizz, and then you. Go home, and nine months later, you give birth to a little half Irish son, and he grows up to be a big, strong drunk, and then he rapes you. And then finally, you give birth to your own quarter Irish retarded grandson. I guess what I'm trying to say is follow your dreams. (laughs) And that is the 20th most offensive rape joke. That that wasn't even a joke. <laughs> well, Big Joe, I thought it was pretty that funny. That wasn't a fucking joke. That was just a stream of rape hate. Victor, what's your rape joke? What the hell are you Fine. Uh, I was in a I was in an elevator with this woman. She didn't know I was black, uh, but she figured out that I was black by my conversation on the phone. I don't know what I was saying on the phone. Like I only like jazz music or where's my reparations? But here's the thing. Take it easy. As man. soon as she figured out that I was black, she took her purse and she moved it over to the other side of her body and took a couple of safety steps to the other side of the elevator. And I was mad, but I decided to take the high road. I was like, you know what, lady, you can move your purse around all you want to. I'm still gonna rape you. <laughs> 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 oh, I wish I was that lady. All right, everybody. This is about our drunk table of gentlemen. Oh, Christ. For Ed Larson. Oh, it's good. Ed Larson, Pat Dixon, Kevin Barnett, yep. Mark Norman. Thanks, yep. buddy. Hey, thanks for having me. Jack I love Zabrowski. Mark Norman. I love I Mark Norman, rape too. Jokes. Do a rape you joke. Jackie, no, do a rape joke. Done. I got raped one time. Yeah. How was it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you next week. That's the closer. That's the closer. <laughs> Cave Comedy Radio, Pat Dick, New God. York City Crime oh, Report. Uh, yeah, Victor, watch Vic- Victor Baronado on Carmen Central. You can watch his uh, special. It's amazing. He's a fantastic guy. Oh.